Introducing the new Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed. The only bed smart enough to sense your movement and automatically adjust to both of you to help you stay comfortable all night. It's even designed to help with this. Much better. Does your bed do that? The Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed is part of our biggest sale of the year, where all beds are on sale. Plus, save an incredible 50% on the Labor Day Limited Edition bed with free home delivery and Saturday. For more details and to find a store near you, go to sleepnumber.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. Here's George Foreman with InventHealth. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View.
All right, how y'all doing out there tonight? It's Jesse. Yes, I know I've been absent all week. I do apologize. Monday night was technical issues beyond my control. And last night, I was with another military spouse who was bringing life into this world with her husband half a world away. And she asked me to be with her. So I'm sorry, as much as I love you fans, my military family has to come first. But at least it was a good reason, I promise. And I'm not alone. I'm not alone tonight. I've got a special guest. How you doing there, Rio? Doing good. How are you guys? How's everybody out there in uh, Radio Land? I think they're all pretty happy. I've seen this tweet flying around. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a singer of Madison Rising, uh, America's most patriotic rock band. And, you know, the fun part about it is uh, this weekend, uh, you know, there's some big things going on down in Virginia. And we decided that uh, we are going to declare war on all extremist groups. So Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and all you white supremacists. Let's see what you got. I think those are pretty powerful words. So well, they're not taken lightly, that's for sure. I think uh, the common citizen is tired of, of bending and breaking to the whims of a few. Um, you know, when somebody can come in there and tell you that uh, the Lord's Prayer on a wall uh, offends them and so everything must be removed, uh, it's kind of uh, kind of ridiculous and It'll continue to do that until you decide that uh, that the many, the masses, <laughs> excuse me, are ready to fight back. You know, change happens when people voice their, uh, make their voices heard, and um, unless uh, unless you start talking or, and standing up, things are not going to change for uh, allowing the one to change the, the world for the many. And that's, uh, you know, for us, that's... We're ready to start fighting back. And unfortunately, some of these groups, you know, they like to get a little bit uh, physical, and uh, and we welcome the physicality. If that's where, if that's the res- uh, level that you want to go to, then we welcome it. Well, I've got to say that I was actually doing some thinking, and granted. I don't cover much in the way of U.S. politics, but that doesn't mean I didn't know about Charleston. I didn't watch the events. Do you know what I compared it to, the events of this past weekend? I compared both the events in Charleston on some level, and did you hear about what happened in North Carolina a little while later where people went and they decided to tear down a statue on their own. That was the, the second one was the one that got to me more than the first, but the first one disturbed me. Yep, yep. Well, no, absolutely. I'm, go ahead. It, it reminded me of Dash or ISIS is what most people call them. My regular listeners will know that Dash is the acronym yep. they hate, and that's why I use it. Anyway, yep. same group, too many names, they're evil. <laughs> It reminded me of their destruction of yeah. any number of absolutely. monuments. And it's like... Yeah, absolutely. They're, go- they're going across the uh, you know Middle East destroying uh, um, yeah. ancient st- statues, carvings. And uh, you know when they start destroying that, uh, they start trying to erase history. And then, uh, and then you come over here to the United States and you have these liberal groups uh, that are trying to do the same thing. And, uh, you know, when we see it over overseas, you get this big uproar like, oh, I can't believe they're doing it. Why are we allowing them to do that? And then we just all we have to do is look at ourselves and, uh, you know, it's happening right now. And people don't really seem to give a damn about it. And that's uh, you know, like what you were saying. It's it's very disturbing and it's upsetting and it's hurtful. Uh, and it's uh, to me, in my eyes, it's not acceptable. Um, but you know, somebody's getting away with it. And if somebody's allowing them to, and I think that's our our leaders, leadership of of many different counties, of many different cities, many different states, uh, they're promoting and allowing this kind of damage to happen. I mean, Mitt Romney 
comes up and says, "Hey, there's two sides to this. One of them is is blatantly evil, and they're you know that's talking about the alt right, which you know in that alt right group they've grouped in the white supremacists, and then the other one is taking the moral high ground, and they're you know that that would be the side where you're speaking of Antifa and Black Lives Matter and Black Panthers, and it's like you've got to be kidding me. You're 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 okay with one side hate group and not okay with the other side's hate group. It's uh, it's ridiculous. You should not be condoning either one of those sides. Well, my question is, where will it end? Will they march on Monticello next? I'm, you know, they, they, there is no end. There, that's the that's the thing. This is not a place where you can say, okay, well, all the Confederate monuments are gone, so we're done. No, that's it's not going to be an end. I mean, there's reports out there that they were. T- People showed up to the New York uh, Museum of History trying to say Teddy Roosevelt's uh, you know, statue and bust needs to come out of there. And it's just, uh, you know, as long as we allow it, then it'll happen. And uh, and unfortunately, it seems like people are going to allow it. Or they can do just like uh, the mayor of Baltimore, uh, was Catherine Pugh, decides she's just going to do it. I'm just going to do it in the middle of the night so nobody knows and there's not an uproar and Baltimore doesn't burn. So I'll just go ahead and make the decision myself and uh, take down four of the monuments that are there and, uh, and and we'll see what happens. And I think that's that was a cowardly move. I think that uh, you know, it shows the the true character and nature of the individuals that have been put in place as leadership. And and unfortunately, I think that they're going to they're going to push too far and uh, and then and then you're going to push back. And that's where. That's where we come in. We're the voice of a of the constitutionalist. The constitutionalist doesn't take sides. I don't. Get, you know, you're not right. You're not left. The fact is, you're right in the middle. You obey the rule of law. You enforce the rule of law. And uh, and and if the Constitution says this is what can happen, then then it happens. And you know, we uh, are there to voice the opinion because the people who believe that are the ones that are slowly getting the Constitution and taken away from them, their rights taken away. And, and we're calling for these guys, the, you know, the, the everyday, common, hardworking individual to stand up and say, you know what, we're done with this crap. This is enough is enough. And if you want to pick a fight, then, then, you know, we don't, as far as Madison Rising, condone any type of violence. However, we don't accept being assaulted either, you know, and we have a right when the, the everyday citizen has a right to protect his life and his property. And, uh, you know, we're just looking at saying, hey, maybe it's time that we start protecting our property and our our life, you know. So this is what this is where we are. We're the voice of this movement. Well, I think that's a fantastic place to be. And I'd also like to say that I I've been a Madison Rising fan since. I first heard about the band and Mm -hmm. I have to say I have quite the Madison rising music collection. And when I heard about your new song, I think I had it purchased within an hour of finding out that it was out. Thank you. And in fact, for all you listeners, don't worry if you haven't heard it, you'll at least get to hear part of it tonight is bumper music because I did something with Rio that I don't do with any other guest. I let him pick his own bumper music, and I figured hey, it was... Lucky days, lucky days. Things, things are going good. Well, I figured it was only fair to let you pick it, because, well, most of my guests aren't lead singers of my favorite band, and I regularly do <laughs> use Madison Risen as, as bumper music, just not your new song, War. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first off, you have a terrible taste in music. Secondly, we very much appreciate uh, getting this favor and uh, and be, you being a little bit lenient and letting us pick letting us pick this new one out because I think timely. You know, time is the essence, and then it 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 hit right at the time where it, I guess it needed to hit. Um, you know, it uh, we'd have this thing recorded and and was ready for release, and uh, and it just so happened to be this. Uh, this rally was going on and um, you know, it happened and it kind of exploded. And I think that, uh, you know, it was kind of 
set up for the explosion. I think they brought in the, the powder kegs and lit the fuse and, and very much wanted it to be exactly what it is. And I think, you know, for, if you look at it the whole way, it's a you know big political game that they're that they're playing, you know. and uh, the easiest way to win this political game is to set a race war up, and and this was a perfect opportunity to do so. So if you look at it, you you start adding it up one plus one, you know it all equals out. It just keeps going. Well, I personally think what you're doing is amazing, and. I don't think I have lousy taste in music. In fact, I have to say that (laughs) my husband, who tends to be more of a harder rock sound listener, I tend to prefer more of the country music style. He tends to go with more hard rock type things. And he was shocked when he started hearing some of the Madison Rising coming out of off my playlist. He's going, since when did you like this stuff? I'm like, since it became patriotic, because I yeah, pride myself I, on having quite the patriotic collection. Yeah, that's a good point, because, you know, uh, uh, we're a hard rock band. Um, we do have some softer stuff. We kind of have something for everybody out there, but uh, but we're definitely going to bring it. We're going to bring some sound. We're going to bring some noise. And uh, you know, hopefully we're going to pump enough people up to now get them out of their seats and doing something about fighting for their own rights and protecting what's left of them. You know, they're, they've been after our guns for a long time. Uh, I think this is going to be a new, I think what's next is I think they'll come back after the guns. I think right now they're setting things up so well that it kind of, the domino effect should happen. If you look at it, you know, they're creating a race war, which is, uh, seems to be pretty easy to do nowadays. Um, the previous administration uh, kind of poured water on it, let it grow, put a little miracle grow on it, and encouraged it. Um, and then uh, now, uh, now it's action. Now they're coming in action, and you know you're praising one hate group and and denouncing another hate group, and that's that causes that division. And and now once that happens, and they they think they created it big enough, then they'll I think they'll come right back after our guns next uh, and make it a bigger issue because you go into the rallies and you have peacekeepers that are walking around with AR-15s, uh, HKs, and uh, Dushfus. You know they they've got the firepower, and I think uh, what I heard yesterday in one of the conversations from the Charlottesville, Virginia police chief was like, well they those militia units had better weapons than we have. They, we were outgunned. And, and I think at that point, I think that's the seed that they're tossing it. Okay. Look at this, look at those weapons. Now we have to go after those weapons to keep them away from the rallies. And so I'm, I'm pretty certain that's what's going to happen next. And, and we'll see, you know, we've been involved in politics and uh, speaking up for the people's rights for a very long time. And I think this is going to be the next thing that's happening. And uh, I wouldn't, I would say four or five months. I, I wouldn't be surprised that it's it's coming out at that point. Well, it may, believe it or not, all this division made me think of one of the, I'll call it classic Madi- Madison Rising songs, one of your softer ones, Before the Hyphens Came. Oh, yeah, Before the Hyphens. Hi- when did we beca- that- become so divided? Sorry. When did we draw all these lines why can't we all just be americans well i, I really believe that um the previous administration started uh, really upholding the criminal and once they started holding the criminal as a victim uh things started changing uh and then once they started the false narratives uh going around of the uh you know the Police are just rogue units that are killing black kids in the street. Uh, you know, they're, uh, Bill Clinton started with the higher incarceration rate, uh, numbers of minorities. Um, so in there, the Democrats, and that's, it's all built on the Democrats. And, and you can see individuals, I think one of the best things that, that people have did was investigate. And they found that, you know, these uh, high-ranking Democrats – that's been in the Congress, you know, their life for, they've been in for a long time and they have ties into uh, investments into the prison systems. 
So the way that they can keep money into the prison systems and get government funding from that is, you know, you got to put people in the cells. Uh, Bill Clinton uh, went after, you know, with a higher incarceration rate of uh, minority youths. <clears throat> he has a, you know, a foundation that has a, a big part in in the um, uh, prison systems uh, of the U.S. right now. Then you go to the Obama administration where uh, he decides that uh, you know, false narratives such as Michael Brown, he brings the Brown family to the White House. He invites Black Lives Matter to the White House. He praises these people. And I think right there, you know, you just keep creating this divide. And every other citizen that knows, hey, this is, you know, I'm calling, throwing the flag on this, knows that it's wrong. Uh, that's your your division is create is created and, and your gaps is just just waiting to wide. All you have to do is just keep doing it. And they've done it over and over and over. So that, uh, you know, to the point where five officers in Dallas were killed, um, you know, they're marching through the streets in, in New York City calling for the death of cops. You know, we want cops dead when we want them now. And, and, and Bill de Blasio, who's, a, uh, you, know, you know, for lack of a better word, piece of crap. Um, you know, he's he's standing there right with them saying, you know, it's, you know, these, they're activists. You know, when you're calling for the death of cops and you're, you know, you're actively in the street calling for them, you're not an activist. You know, you're a, uh, you're an anarchist and a terrorist. And, uh, and when you praise these kind of people, the average everyday American is pissed off about that. So there your divide just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, uh, you know, what's the biggest population in the United States? It happens to be of the Caucasian um, ethnicity. So when you see uh, you have a, a wide range of Caucasians that are watching a large group of minorities um, get away with murder, it, it and, and, then, and then you're being told that you're bad because, you know, you've created an environment for them to get away with murder. Um, the division... The, the gap grows tremendously, and I think I think that's where we are now. And you know, it's just a matter of time before uh, Charlottesville happens all over the country. I think that it could happen. It could happen right now. They're marching in Philadelphia right now, and so I, I think that it could happen. It could happen tonight, and then uh, you know, it's going to be uh, pretty devastating. I think we've taken our full step all the way back to the 60s uh, prior to uh, Martin Luther King Day. So, uh, yeah, I, I feel it's going to get ugly. Well, I I pray you're wrong, but the writing's on the wall, much like, I hate to say it, I'm afraid of what's going to happen in another location around the world. But before we get to what my thoughts on Nor North Korea and asking your opinion on that bit of chaos... Mm -hmm. What yeah. did you think of the safe space noise that happened after the election? I think the safe space thing is is completely ridiculous. Um, you have you have safe space being uh, you know you have somebody what would they do? They wrote on a curb Trump wrote the name Trump and, and they needed sp space for that. I think it's immature children that are going to college you're you're 18 19 years old i won't call you an adult you're still a child you still have not processed enough in the world where you can step up and call yourself an adult um you're getting there and you're learning your way to it but um but when you let somebody who writes the word trump who happens to be a that's a last name that can't do any physical harm that's oppressive to you that's so far that you need to i need days off because i can't take tests I got to have a safe space because I'm so stressed out. You know what? The sad fact of the matter is it. I blame all of us. I think it's a, a bunch of crap. I don't think it should be there, but I, I, I don't blame them. They're children. I blame us for allowing that to happen. We pay these colleges hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, you can go to, to some of these colleges for four years, you're coming out with $200,000 in debt. And us as hardworking Americans are willing to pay them to for our children to go to have these educations. And until the day we decide, you know what, I'm not going to pay for this. This is not what my child needs. 
um, and we start taking our money back out of it, I think until we decide that that's what's going to happen, um, then these uh, colleges and universities are going to keep doing it. You know, we we want to draw the children. We want to make it easier on them. If you can't take a test today, we'll we'll just. I know you're stressed out, so we'll just give you your grade. And uh, and what we're doing is we're failing our children. We're failing the next generation and and teaching them how to work for what's what's needed. Because you know we're either going to have a job, a workforce, and company owners that are just going to pay people to do nothing all day except whine and cry. Or the flip side is they're not going to have a job because they sit there and whine and cry. You know, it's, but it's our fault. You know, it's, it's all of our fault, which is unfortunate. If we've, been, if we've spent a dime on a university and we know that they're doing that, then it's our fault. Well, I've got to say, I agree with you about your opinion on safe spaces, that they're absolute ridiculousness, and that, honestly, I looked at it from another perspective. Shoot. What kind of defense are we going to have with a bunch of people who need safe spaces? God forbid we ever have to send our men and women into harm's way. What kind of military are we going to be able to create out of these people that can't even handle the election results? <clears throat> well, uh, I'm, you know, fortunately, I think that there's enough of us that are going to be in the military uh, that we're we're the type of people that don't need those safe spaces. I think that uh, you know, I think that uh, there's a, going to be enough of us that are volunteering. Um, now, God forbid, we have to draft anybody. There comes a point where we have to draft someone, then we're we're in serious hurt and status. You know that I think that will be. I'd rather go into a fight with ten guys, and, and I say guys as able-bodied people. Uh, anybody that's willing to fight, I, I would take ten individuals over you know thirty college students any day. You know, I'd be, you know, I'd be the last three hundred standing. I'd be one of the the last three hundred Spartans. I'd rather fight the whole damn nation with three hundred willing. Than to take ten thousand of, of of these college students nowadays, they just I wouldn't even trust it. And just for our listeners, you speak from the position of how many years did you spend in the Air Force? I did twenty years. Twenty years. I did uh, seven tours, about three years over in the Middle East. Um, I've dropped bombs on uh, five different continents. So I've created a little red mist and bone chips in my days, and you know that's uh, you know, I guess as an ammo dog, we provide the enemy the opportunity to die for his country plenty of times, and I'm you know there's not a sad a sad bone in my body. Well, I have I want to publicly say thank you for your service, and that reminds me I meant to make an announcement at the top of my show, since this is my first show. This week, since the names of the most recent casualties for, in, from Operation Inherent Resolve in Iraq have happened, I will be ending the show tonight on TAPS. And I, I was telling Rio this, and why don't you repeat what you said when I said, sorry, Rio, I was going to play war because I had intended to do TAPS last night, but I had to postpone it to tonight because I got called away and didn't do my show. So what was well, your, what were your words when I told you why I was ending the show on taps tonight? I said absolutely it, 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 as it should be. You know these there's not many of you that would uh, you know you sign your life away. Uh, it's one of the things I try to talk to my children about is you're going to go through life and you're going to make some friends and and outside of the military you know you're going to have guys and girls that be like hey I'm your ride or die you know I'll I'll take a bullet for you which <laughs> but the fact of the matter is. They may just be saying that, but when you're in the military, I've been around so many people that when they say, I will take a bullet for you, that's what they mean. They may not even know you, but they're willing to sacrifice their life in order for you to go home. And and if it means that uh, that you don't play war at the end of this show and you do what's right and, and you give the respect to those men who who went down and, and faced a, a glorious death, uh, you know, you give them the respect that they need and 
and uh for a gentleman like myself you know all i can do is uh is sit in envy of that beautiful death because i you know a lot of us would want one that's how we wish that we would go and um unfortunately we you know we may have made it back and, and we're never going to get that opportunity again but those guys uh you got to give the respect where it's due and, and uh you know, the ones that they gave their life up and and you'll be reading their names tonight you know till valhalla and for those who don't understand the warrior mind it's not that they don't want to come home it's just if they're asked to give their last full measure and give their last breath for this country they will all willingly do so i think that kind of sums it up what do you think there rio i think that's exactly it i think that's exactly it yeah. you always wish that it was you you know wish it was me that was that that did that you instead know, of the time. man or man man or woman to your left and to your right it's like yes i would have happily done that well unfortunately yeah. we do have to take a brief commercial break and i am going to make it as brief as i can get away with but we have come to the point in the show where we have to pay those radio station bills but as promised here is the bumper from the madison rising song war their newest release it just came out sunday Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new 
new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. Hope you enjoyed that very special bumper music f- from Madison Rising from their latest hit, War. Now, we're going to turn to a topic that's more commonly discussed on the show. And for those of you regular listeners, you'll know who this is. <laughs> that is my sound for quackers, otherwise known as Kim Jong-un of North Korea. <laughs> oh, yes. I call him Quackers. I think that I think Rio just learned a little something tonight. I just think it's a, I I have to lighten the topic up a little bit, so that's my excuse. But sound effects are just fun. That's all right. I'll tell you what. I I get a laugh at him too. I mean, it's just a one of the craziest guys uh, on the international scene. And uh, and to tell you the truth, I don't. I, <laughs> he gets away with everything. He's a perfect uh, international manipulator, and uh, and you know, of course, I don't agree with it, but I tell you what, he's good at what he does. He's good at what he does. This dude is a uh, he's a master at it, and we fall for it every time. Yes, we do. And for anybody who thinks that us quote falling for it is new. I got news for you. Years. Let's hear what Secretary Tillerson had to say about our policy towards North Korea. The diplomatic and other efforts of the past 20 years to bring North Korea to a point of denuclearization have failed. So we have 20 years of failed approach. That about sums it up, doesn't it, Rio? That's it. I mean, I, I early on in my career, I spent uh, you know some time down in Kunsan Air Base. I was part of the Wolf Pack um, in South Korea. Uh, we were uh, one of the submarines ran aground. We had some of their special ops uh, individuals that were caught outside of our base, um, and uh, you know we didn't deal with them then. We should have dealt with them at that point. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. We were get threatening um, videos sent to our our intel officers, and they play it for us, and we end up arming up everything, getting ready, you know, rock and roll, and we get a threat that says if any movement happens on these flight lines or mobilizations when you're doing the the big joint exercises with South Korea's Rock Army, uh, we will attack you, and you know, and then and then we. Subsequently, make some kind of movement. They'd back off, and then all of a sudden, they'd ask for, you know, fifty billion dollars or fifty million, whatever it was, some kind of fifty. Uh, they want to, you know, X amount of money and from the International Monetary Fund, and uh, or they would just keep on doing it, and all of a sudden, they'd get paid off again. So, uh, you know, uh, they uh, when they don't have money to to feed their their people, I mean, there's there's stories out there that you can, you know, you can actually go search and find that that they're digging up deceased people and actually eating them. Um, they've been eating bark, stripping all the landscape. I mean, there's, it's a horrible situation over there. It's funny because, uh, what is it? Uh, Newt Gingrich calls him one of the, uh, or was it Newt Gingrich and, and, uh, uh, Colonel Oliver, uh, 
Ollie North says that uh, you know he's the, the only fat person in Korea. And then, you know, when they, they're the only ones with food, you know, if you're in the army, you're going to get fed. If you're not, you don't eat. And, um, you know, he just uh, keeps getting money funneled to him. And I believe it, you know, it's coming from a lot of that money is coming from Iran. And so we've been duped over and over again. And he's pushed the line over and over again. And all we do is bend and bow down and take a lead on, oh, we're going to give a sanction. But if you break that sanction, we'll give you $50 million. <laughs> it's just uh it's just ridiculous. Keep on build, breaking the sanctions. You can do whatever you want to as long as you say for humanitarian needs I need X amount of money. Well, and the international <laughs> Guess uh, what? Excuse me. No problem. I'll give you a moment to clear Mr. Frog out of your throat while <laughs> I explain a little bit. I actually believe there's a co- correlation between the uh, 1.7 billion that Obama sent into Iran on a plane, and oh, yeah. the recent develop fast sped up development of North Korea's nuclear and missile technology. I'm 100 percent behind it. I think that uh, you know Iran has been funneling money into it, while Iran has been covertly building a nuclear program. Um, there's oh, yeah. one nuclear program that's had the uh, the capabilities of just free reign, and that's been uh, the Kim Jong Il and Kim Jong Un uh, dynasty that's over in North Korea. And the way to speed it up is to give them money and uh, you know pay for more technology and send in some things. Um, so I think that that's that's absolutely 100% correlation. As they sped up, it's because they've got more money to do buy the pieces that they need from. Uh, some of these more uh, donating type countries out there. A couple of the interesting things I've played on my show, and this is Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Dunford. Now, it's about a 45 second clip, but I think it's worth listening to. And then we'll discuss Trump's comments on North Korea. I think for all of us, we should we should give Secretary Tillerson. Uh, full support in attempting to resolve this diplomatically and economically, even as we recognize that it may not happen. And there may have to, there may have to be a a follow-up option, which is the military option. But uh, you can, we can wring our hands and say it'll never happen, or we can roll up our sleeves and make an effort to, uh, to have a concerted economic and diplomatic plan that, that does cause KJU, Kim Jong-un to come to the table and, and begin to have a conversation, at least stop the path that he's on right now, which is further development of intercontinental ballistic missiles and nuclear capability. And I th- to me, uh, it makes all the sense in the world to prove the theory of the case and, uh, and to work this for a few more months. Now, Rio, did you happen to catch th- what he said in the last few seconds of that clip? Um, to me, it sounded like he wanted to put uh, a time frame on how long we're going to talk to him about it. Um, he said a he few more up... months. Yeah. So and... it seems like he wants to put a time frame on it, and uh, you know, and then bring back the military option. But uh, I'm not certain that uh, that we need to wait that much longer. I mean, it, North Korea has something that we don't have, and that's the freedom to just test and test and test. You try to test weapons here in the United States. You're going to have one test. If whatever that happens, you got to go through all your data processing. You got to go through your bureaucrats. You got, and it's, it could be several months before you even draw up how you're going to fix and attempt the next test. But uh, North Korea, those they don't have that bureaucratic uh, red tape, so they can, you know, they can test something. They can figure out what happened on that test, and they can retry it as soon as they can get it built. <clears throat> so they have the you know, they have the advancement, they have the time, and they have the the ability and freedom uh, to correct any mistakes uh, on a very rapid uh, scale. All right. Well, now I'm go- just to remind everybody about what Trump said, which he then came back a few days later and said his statement wasn't strong enough. But let's remind everybody. I know you've probably all heard this clip before, but I am going to play it. North Korea, best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. 
He has been very threatening uh, beyond a normal statement. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. Thank you. Thank you. So Trump said, said that. What I thought was interesting was he said that a few days later, Kim Jong-un appeared to blink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, uh, I think that he's, <clears throat> he's finally realizing that he's not dealing with someone that's going to take his crap. He's not going to bend over because he threats. You know, the fact of the matter is, we we created, we allowed this to happen. We we should have handled it a long time ago, but we allowed it to happen. And uh, the mainstream media went nuts on that statement. I mean, they went, I thought they were going to go jumping out of buildings when he made that statement. And, oh, he's out of control. He's lost his mind. He's putting the nation in danger. But it's like, hey, guys, did you did you just forget? that North Korea just said they're going to attack the United States. They are going to attack the United States because Guam is United States territory. They are going to attack the United States. And I don't even understand where people were pissed off about that. Like, how could anybody go, oh, Trump, you're out of of your mind. And then I dial it down to a, a, a local, personal level. If I was to walk up to you, and say, I'm going to punch you in the face. And you do nothing about it. Then you deserve to get punched in the face. You know, I'm going to give you that punch in the face. If you just allow me to do it, well, there you go. You get what you want. There's no way in the world that if someone is saying they're going to attack the United States, they have the capability They have the mindset, and you have the threat. The only thing you don't have at this point is the actual attack. So I think I applaud President Trump. I applaud him for coming back and saying that statement wasn't strong enough. And uh, if somebody's going to send a ballistic missile, intercontinental ballistic missile towards the United States or any of its interests, I think we should retaliate with fire and fury like the world has never known. I'm 100% behind that. Well, I actually, I have to say one thing. And mm-hmm. I, I don't want to see the bloodshed that will happen on the peninsula if we have to, to put the military muscle into play. Right. However... I would that love, means a lot to you, you know, personally. It means a, a hell of a lot to you. I would and, love uh, to give Kim Jong-un that proverbial punch in the nose that he needs. Yeah, and I, I think that, uh, you know, we were waiting on, you know, uh, North Korea has a, a, a friendly nation of China that's kind of covered their back for a long time, many years, many decades. And, uh, China uh, said, hey, if, if, if North Korea acts, then you have the freedom to uh, retaliate. So I think when they said that, uh, I think that's uh, hastened KJU's uh, ability to blink and back off of it because uh, he no longer had that umbrella protection uh, from one of the biggest um, militaries in the world, if not the biggest military in the world. And uh, he kind of opened up the door for our president to say, I don't need Congress's approval at this point. I can do that. I can bomb you for 90 days before I need Congress's approval. So I'll let you know that if you make another threat and make movements towards it, I'll take that as an actual act of war, meet you with that fire and fury. You know, again, it sounds like, uh, you know, I and Madison Rising condone a lot of uh, physical attacks. But, uh, you know, I also look at it as I don't condone it, but it is always an option. And I will say that, uh, you know, people say war is never an option. Well, sometimes it is. You know, and you don't tell a bully to stop if he's pushing you, punching you, or hitting you in any way, assaulting you. You can't ask a bully to stop because he won't. 
sometimes you got to meet his aggression with a higher point of aggression to make him stop. Well, so at this point, that's where I feel that uh, I feel that that's where we are. But I also think that we have the strategic assets that can go in and do a precision strike and uh, you know cut the head off the snake if we actually need it to happen. I agree with you. Now, I've actually got one more clip, and I promise this will be the last one for the night. At least, I'm hoping it is. And this was, again, General Dunford. And listen to what he says about war on the Korean Peninsula. Many people, and this is an important point, many people have talked about military op- op- options as with words like unimaginable. And I would probably shift that slightly and say it would be horrific and there would be a loss of life unlike any we have experienced in our lifetimes and I mean anyone who's been alive since World War II has never seen the loss of life that could occur if there's a conflict on the Korean Peninsula but as I've told my counterparts both friend and foe uh, it is not unimaginable to have military options to uh, respond to North Korean uh, nuclear capability. What's unimaginable to me is allowing a capability that will allow a nuclear weapon to land in Denver, Colorado. That's unimaginable to me. What do you think of that one there? I think it's it's very well put. Uh, Speaking from a a, uh, a veteran who served on, on, on the peninsula in South Korea, I knew that. If war, a conventional war broke out, I had X amount of time. Um, and bases that we operate over there have, you know, X amount of time of survivability that we accept. And uh, and then we have X amount of time of survivability that we accept. And every one of us that walk over there, we're told how long they're expecting us to be there if something happens. I think that we've accepted that we have a job to do, a job to perform, and are willing to take that and uh, accept the fact that we will um, be avenged at some point. We will do exactly what we uh, had said. We'll get that beautiful death that every warrior wants. And then uh, and then we'll ensure that our warrior brothers uh, avenge us and, and win that war. And when what he said, unimaginable, it is unimaginable that we would allow anything to hit this great United States that's what's unimaginable. He's absolutely correct. We're the mightiest country in the world, and uh, and you don't get that opportunity to hit us. And and so, I, General Dunkirk, I'm at 100% behind him uh, all the way with that statement. That's the unimaginable thing, that people want us to back off in order to basically open the door for uh, KJU to uh, you know get his missiles off. And, and no, unimaginable is to allow that. Well, I happen to say, even though, and I have mentioned this on air previously, that my husband is in South Korea, I would rather see the war on the breakout on the Korean Peninsula. And yes, even with my husband there, than I would any attack on the United States. And you know what? I'd, I'd uh, dare to bet that your husband would, would want the same thing. He would. We've actually had that conversation. It's it's a very tough conversation. But we have actually had that conversation. In fact, this is his second trip to the peninsula. His first trip was about eight, nine years ago. And he said, I don't want to go back unless... Bullets are flying. And I looked at him when he packed his bags this time and said, you may be eating those words. He may be. And God bless him. We laughed and <clears throat> joked, and then we got serious and had the conversation, the, the, the what-if conversation that every service member should have with their spouse. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a, there's a huge demographic in the United States that will never know what it's like. Got to talk about, you know, what if I don't come home? Or prepare that uh, what if DVD or CD so that their loved ones know who they are and what they sound like. You know, they just don't know that. But it's a very powerful thing, and it's a very humbling thing when you have to uh, basically look at your own immortality 
and uh, know that it could come at the hands of someone else, and you're okay with that. So it's a huge thing. It's a very important thing. It's a very intimate thing, and, uh, you know, God bless you all for having that, and God bless them for willing to do it. I am the proud keeper of a ver- of two very special casket flags. And I say I'm the custodian of them for for reasons because, well, I was listed of next of kin for both member, both of these very special people. One, of course, was my first husband. Mm-hmm. And most people would say, once bitten, you should be shy. You shouldn't, mm-hmm. you know, I've been told I should never have remarried a member of the armed forces. But you can't help who you fall in love with. That's right. <clears throat> That's right. That's char- you know, there's a character that's in there. And if that's what attracts you, you'll go to the same fish pond. <clears throat> you got to have it. That's why I say it. You got to have that, that little piece. And, um, you know, once you're in it, you know, it's hard to want to get out of it. You know, you, you become something that's uh, much bigger than yourself. And, and that's not everywhere. You can't find that everywhere. And it's, it's just who I am. It's part of part of my character. And that character was instilled in me by the other person whose cast a, casket flag I proudly keep in safe safe custody. And that was my cousin who was a member of a very another very special special forces unit. So yes, I have not one but two casket flags in my house and I don't think I've ever shared that on air before God bless alright let's lighten this up a little bit Rio <clears throat> why don't you tell us what Madison Rising has coming up <clears throat> alright Madison Rising let's see we're going to hit the we're going to start hitting the road soon we got uh, we got a show in uh, we got we're doing a double duty on Saturday this weekend we got shows in Pennsylvania and then we I tell it down to Virginia, <clears throat> down around Norfolk. You know, we got a show down there, headlining late on Saturday evening. Right, we're coming back. Uh, we're gonna stay at home for a day or two, and we get to go out. We'll be heading to Louisville, Kentucky. We're going out to Oregon. Coming back to Kentucky. Uh, coming back up this way at home. Then going back down to Missouri, um, and then from there on, uh, man, we got Missouri. We've got uh, we got another Kentucky show that we'll be hitting. Uh, and then uh, and then we'll be doing the mother of all rallies in D.C. on September 16th. So all you patriots out there, um, it's easy to talk patriot stuff, and it's harder to do patriot stuff. But if you can, make your plans to get your butts on down to the, <coughs> excuse me, the greatest gathering of patriots on the East Coast, September 16th in D.C. at mother of all rallies. We'll be headlining that show. Um, so there'll be a lot of great speakers, a lot of great information that's going to be held right there on the National Mall. And, um, you know, I'm sure we're going to get some uh, counter-protests. So we're going to need all the Patriot boots on the ground that we can get. And then after that, <clears throat> we'll be heading out west. We'll be doing a, a nice run to Vegas. Then we'll come come back to – and we'll do uh, Florida. We'll do South Carolina. And then, uh, and then head out to Texas. So we've got a – Texas and Arizona, so we've got a lot of stuff going on the rest of the year, and uh, and in that we'll be singing our new song, playing it hard and proud and loud. You know, we'll be doing the, we'll be calling and declaring war on every state that we go there, and letting you guys know that we are there for you, and uh, and we'll lead the charge if necessary. Where can people find more information both about you and Madison Rising? Uh, they can go on our social media sites like everyone else. We have, uh, you know, we're very active on our Facebook site. And then if you want, you can connect to each one of us. We all, you know, we all appreciate uh, individuals and what they stand for and they, what they want to say, good or bad. So you can connect straight to us if you want to. You can look at us on Instagram. And if you want our music, you know, we're all over the digital uh, platforms. Or you can order the hard copies. But if you want to, uh, you know, it's iTunes, Amazon. You know, CD Baby, if you don't want to spend it, you want to listen to us on Spotify, go to our Madison Rising channel. And I mean, we're everywhere. So, you know, play us loud, play us proud, and 
and by God, let's let's prepare for what may may be coming next from either North Korea or right here on the domestic side. Well, for those of you who want to track me down, you I'm going to keep this short, sweet, and simple. You can find me on Twitter at Jesse's POV. And you can email me at the station, Jesse's POV at KLRNradio.com. Now, remember, I did say I was ending the show on taps. So, the next words will be the final spoken words from me tonight. The Department of Defense announced today the death of two soldiers who were supporting Operation Inherent Resolve. They died August 13th of wounds sustained while engaged in combat operations in Iraq. Both soldiers were assigned to 2nd Battalion, 319th Airborne Field Artillery Regiment, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 82nd Airborne Division, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Killed were Sergeant Roshane Yvonne Brooks of Brooklyn, New York, Specialist Alan Stigler, of Arlington, Texas. Progressive brings you Flowetry with Flow. A tool called Name Your Price. Get a grip on your spending like an industrial vice. It's nice. Beats rolling the dice. I prefer brown rice. Don't carry dumbbells when you walk on thin ice. Splash. Get insurance based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.